A number of years ago, I used the term documentary adjacent, uh, kind of jokingly, to describe my practice, but I think it's actually an apt fit. Um, you know, what I do is related to documentary insofar as I do a lot of research, it's kind of journalistic, I go out into the world and find myself in situations that are fascinating, thought-provoking, and then I, I want to find a way to kind of share with a broader audience. Um, but I've never made traditional documentaries in terms like mockumentary or um, faux documentary or reenactment don't seem to really uh, encompass what I do. Um, this notion of being adjacent to something suggests a kind of space. Like what do you find in the library when you look for one book, but what you're really interested in the book that's just to the right that you didn't know you could find? So each of my projects ends up kind of taking a slightly different form bearing some relationship to documentary, but allowing me a chance to take better advantage of a context in which viewers come together into an architected space that I uh, can design and control to a certain extent. So the work bears some resemblance to documentary, but I don't think it would be fair to really call it documentary or experimental documentary or mockumentary or reenactment. Documentary adjacent is probably the best term I can come up with so far. As soon as I learned that standardized patients existed and were in wide use around the country and around the world, I just thought this was totally fascinating and super up my alley. You know, for a couple of decades, really, I've been making work that touches on questions of performance, um, communication, subjectivity, power dynamics, healthcare. It just seemed like this situation in which you have people playing patients as if you could standardize a patient, as if everyone's experience of illness um, is in any way interchangeable with another person's. Of course it's not. Um, so it seemed like a kind of oxymoron, just the whole notion of a standardized patient. The more I learned about it, the more I realized that there was a project there that I wanted to investigate. The installation is set up in such a way that when you walk in, you kind of have to make a choice. There's one screen that divides the room in half, and there's one soundtrack that fills the room, but what you see on one side of the screen is pretty different from what you see on the other. One side of that screen shows live action footage of encounters between standardized patients and medical students, while the other side of the screen shows kind of behind the scenes background information revealing the various scripts, diagnostic flow charts, and other sorts of information that either the standardized patient or the doctor is privy to, but never both. So you may notice that there's something different happening on the other side of the room. You may notice the feet of someone sitting um, behind the screen and wonder what they're seeing. But you really have to oscillate between positions, either the kind of scripted or the apparently authentic, in order to get a full picture of what's going on. The project traces encounters between medical students and four patients. There's a 16-year-old girl who's come in looking for contraceptives. There's a woman in her 30s with a high-stress job who has to really be convinced to take the chest pains she's been experiencing seriously. And there's a woman in her 70s who's starting to show signs of cognitive decline and difficulties with her activities of daily living. There's also an older man in a palliative care scenario who is dying of colon cancer Standardized patients enter these encounters with fairly detailed scripts um, that explain their background, their age, their medical history, their family history. They know all this information that the med students they're talking to don't know. The med students, of course, have a wealth of medical knowledge and are in training to be able to properly diagnose and treat whatever condition it is that the standardized patient is supposed to have. The way we filmed it was really like a documentary. We um, brought the people into the room together and let the encounters unfold in real time, editing them down and splicing them together in post-production. It wasn't really until the piece was in post that I started to get a sense of how it might all come together and what structure would make the most sense. It started to become really clear to me that this bifurcated scene that forces you to position yourself on one side or the other was an important metaphor for the kind of limited information and um, kind of blindfolded perspective that any one person might come into one of these encounters with. So 
in the installation, one has an opportunity to kind of walk around, revisit the exchange from a series of different perspectives. Of course, in the pressured timing of an actual exam, none of that's really possible. In these clinical encounters, there are always surveillance cameras running so that the med students and their professors afterwards can review the encounters and learn from their mistakes and learn from their strengths. Oftentimes, what happens in these encounters is um, totally unpredictable. So a student may come in with certain given facts about a case, but what unfolds in the encounter depends so much on how they ask questions, on how they respond to the res answers that they receive, and on how they follow up. So if a medical student stacks a bunch of questions back to back, the standardized patient working with them has been instructed only to answer the last question that was asked. If a standardized patient is asked about their religious beliefs and a medical student overshares their own, um, they may be graded lower because they haven't demonstrated really strong listening and empathic skills and instead have turned the conversation to their own interests and needs. There are always these unexpected, awkward, spontaneous, stranger than fiction moments that occur in these encounters. And when I observed many of them from the basement of a medical school watching over closed circuit TV as young doctors in training spoke with actors who you know, have done this and played these parts a hundred times, um, I found myself just deeply empathic for both of them. It's a very difficult performance for each. And the way each has to suspend disbelief in order to have a really meaningful connection occur um, is super interesting to me as a filmmaker. Something that I really couldn't have foreseen while making the work was that we would, in just a matter of years, face this global pandemic in which so many of our loved ones have to go to the hospital, suffer, and die alone. I mean, I've really come to appreciate the importance of having someone there by your side when you're afraid. Um, and I think a lot of what the standardized patients are able to encourage doctors and training to do is to listen and to show up and to be there in whatever way they can.